What is your Christian opinion? All I have is Christian opinions, Katie. I'm a Christian. <laughs> They're not all right, but all right. What is your Christian opinion on birth control? Not the morning after pill, but the daily pills, right? So the, um, what is it? The uh, hormonal birth control pill, hormonal birth control pill or a depot shot. Uh, you could add in there. Um, I, oh gosh, the, IUD. I always get it confused. IED is a bomb planted in the ground that explodes. Quite different but not that different than an IED, which is a bomb implanted in a woman's arm that explodes a child. Um, so that being said, that already gives you a little bit of my opinion, you know? So what's my opinion on, uh, so you're saying, Katie, you're saying obviously the birth, you know, the uh, morning after pill is um, abortive by nature and, and not just the nature of what the pill does, uh, but the in intent of the one who takes it, right? You're taking it with the intention of, if I do have life in my womb, I want to kill it, right? So you're absolutely right about that. Uh, good job, Katie, for, for pinpointing that because that's, um, that's very clear. Um, what I would say though about, you know, let's just, we'll, we'll just focus on the birth hormonal pill because we'll, we'll make an argument from the lesser to the greater, right? So if, if, if I can argue against using the pill, the daily pill uh, for birth control, then certainly you can't do the IUD, you know, or the depot shot or what, whatever. So um, I would say, no, you can't do the pill. Uh, my wife and I, uh, before we knew these things, before we had researched these things or heard any teaching on these things, I never heard pastors talk about it. I never heard it preached from a, a, the pulpit or anything like that. Um, our first, it wasn't long, but about two, three months of marriage, um, we, my wife was taking the pill. And then we came to this conviction. We, we became aware of what we were doing and everything that was involved in the truth of God's word in light of these matters and immediately stopped uh, taking that pill. And so, um, so we, we failed at this. And I think there's a lot of ignorance around the subject. Part of the reason why there's ignorance around the subject is because there's deception. Uh, there's deception in, in the medical realm. All right. So if you go to your doctor, uh, women, um, and you ask, is this pill abortive in nature? They're going to say, oh, no, 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 it's not. Don't you worry. And they're lying. I want you to know right now they are lying to you. All right. So let me explain. So some of this is, <laughs> I'll get to some biblical things, but a lot of this is just technical. Okay. And then the only reason I know it is I, you know, I'm not a biologist, right? But I do know what a woman is. I know what a baby is. I know what a pill is. Um, I know these things because I'm not a biologist, but I'm a Christian. I have common sense and an open Bible. Um, and I live in God's world with natural revelation and blah, blah, blah. So uh, this is what I learned. I had to research these things because I'm a Christian. I want to live honorably before God, which involves you having to do a lot of research on a lot of things. I had to research uh, vaccines and not just, you know, the, the COVID vaccine, but I went back since then and was like, should we be giving our kids all these other vaccines, you know, and looking at this and looking at that. And so being a part of being a Christian, let me just say this part of being a Christian means hard work. It's just like, it, there's a lot of things that we have to research and learn and know if we want to really take, um, our, our responsibility of, of, of living in God's world righteously and responsibly and exercising proper stewardship over our children and over our finances and over this and over, there's just, there's a lot to do. It's a lot of work. So, um, the doctor will say, this is not abortive in nature. That's because they changed the definition of conception. So what the medical establishment has done, particularly applying it to this issue of birth control, is they've said that a child is not conceived, or they would say a fetus, uh, is not conceived until implantation. Whereas what Christians have always held, and a long time before we had, you know, ultrasounds and sonograms and all that kind of stuff, before we ever had the medical technology that we have today, I'm talking centuries for centuries, John Calvin, way back, Augustine, what Christians have always held, church history for 2000 years, is that conception, life begins at conception and conception is defined by fertilization. The sperm, the seed of the man entering the woman and entering particularly one of her eggs. That's it. So, so the question is this conception. We believe as Christians in the sanctity, upholding the sanctity of life, that life begins, human life begins at conception. So the question is, where is conception? Is it implantation or fertilization? Fertilization is the answer. When, when you have a zygote, when you have an egg that has been fertilized by a sperm, that is the beginning of human life. That is conception. And that was, even for the pagan, the unbelieving world, that was the medical understanding for quite a while until somewhat recently. 
And they changed it from fertilization to now that fertilized egg has to implant and then it's conception. So when the doctor tells you, no, this, this birth horm uh, hormonal birth control pill is not abortive by nature, uh, what he's saying is that it very well may abort, kill, end the life of a fertilized egg. It just won't do it bef uh, after the egg's been implanted. But it will do it after fertilization. There are three measures, okay? Three measures that are baked in. It's the design of, of the pill. The first is to thicken the cervical fluid in the woman uh, to slow down the swimmers from the man, the sperm, to where they, they just they get bogged down and they can't make it to the egg. All right, that's the first measure. That would be preventative, not abortive. Okay, that would that would uh, hinder an egg from being fertilized, not take a fertilized egg and kill it. Okay, and there is a dif difference between preventative and abortive. Okay, so the first measure, the three measures. First is not abortive, but preventative. The second is also preventative. Um, it's to hinder the cycle of the woman so that she does not produce eggs to be fertilized to begin with. Also preventative. So thickening of the cervical fluid to slow down the sperm so they don't make it to the egg. And then also ensuring that if they did make it to the egg, there's no egg there to begin with. That's also preventative. Now, I'm not even going to get into like whether or not, you know, these are good health decisions, which I would argue in many cases they're not. And for women who have difficult, um, periods and those, I understand there are different reasons why a woman for hormonal reasons might, but there are other options. And I don't have time to go into that, but I would again say being a Christian is hard work. Go, you know, read, uh, do some research, but there are other options besides taking the pill. So number one, three measures. One is preventative, slows down the sperm. Number two, uh, make sure the egg isn't there, even if the sperm arrive. But the third measure, and this is on the box. I mean, you get, I mean, this is, they boast of this, right? Because they're, tr they're trying to sell a product and say, this is highly effective. And the reason it's highly effective is because it doesn't just have one shot of stopping you from getting pregnant, but three shots, three different methods. And, and the third method is right there. You can read it. The third method is the thinning of the uterine lining in the uterus, the thinning of the lining. And this method ensures that if the cervical fluid did not get quite thick enough, and therefore the sperm makes it, and the egg was actually there, it didn't get stopped with the woman's cycle, and fertilization actually happened, which we believe that's the moment of conception, and therefore that's when life begins. This now child, young child, as young as you could possibly be, but a child, human being, life, this life, is now going to an inhospitable environment where, because what the egg then needs to do is attach to the uterine lining, but it can't because the wall, the lining has been thinned in such a way that the egg has nowhere to go. This fertilized egg, this person dies. And here's the real horror that they won't tell you. And you need to know women who take the birth control pill, right? Because I know the logic. The argument is this, right? So some of you might be, all right, so this is part of the logic. Well, if, if uh, you know, the only way that would happen, Pastor Joel, is, is, you know, basically what you're saying is the first two measures that are preventative would have to fail in order for the egg to be fertilized in the first place. But then the third measure of thinning the uterine lining would have to remain intact. And that's the only scenario that could, uh, that could accomplish, you know, a child being aborted with the pill. The first two measures would have to fail that are preventative, but the third measure remain intact that is abortive. And the argument, because I've heard the counters, the argument is, well, if the first two measures are failing, then that just means the pill's not working. That means the third measure is failing also. There's no science, no data, no studies whatsoever to back that up. None. And there never will be. Because research costs money, and there is no incentive for these birth control pill companies to do that research. No incentive whatsoever. So, so my point is, you're just, it's Russian roulette. So you're saying, well, I think, right? You can't base it off of facts and research and data because there is none. So you're, it's just a hunch. You're just saying, well, I think, Joel, that if the pill, if two thirds of the pill isn't working, right? The first two measures, preventative, then I, I think, I, I just believe in my heart that, that, you know, it's all or nothing. I just think that's the way it works. If, if two thirds of the pill isn't working, none of the pill is working. Okay, great. That, so that's going to be your rhetoric, your argument when you stand before a thrice holy God. I, uh, I, I, don't, wanna, I don't envy you. I don't want to be you. 
It's not going to be my argument. Right? There's no data to back that up. You're literally just operating on a hunch. You're just saying, I think it's all or nothing. The, you know, all three measures work or all three measures fail based off of no data. I just, I just think it. I feel it in my heart. So, so at best, even if that's your opinion, at best, you're playing Russian roulette. And you're not playing Russian roulette with your life, holding a gun up to your head, but with the lives of your children, with your babies. Right? Let's, <laughs> that's the theme of today's episode. Let's care about babies. Think about babies. Focus on babies. Remember babies? Rejoice with babies. Uh, babies. Yeah, babies. That, that's a real thing. Babies. We, we're Christians. We love those things. We love those little cuddly things. Babies. We are pro-babies. We're Christians. We don't play Russian roulette with babies. Okay? So that's, that's that. The last thing that I was going to say is even if you hold to that counter, it's all or nothing. You know, if the first two preventative measures are failing, then I believe the third one's failing. And so then, therefore, in that case, uh, there's no scenario where uh, my child would be aborted. And therefore, I think it's ethical to use the pill. Okay. There are studies on this, what I'm about to say. Women who go off the pill often have a lot of health problems, right? And again, that's talk for another day. But a lot of times what will happen is the cervical fluid out of these three measures, um, the third measure, the, the one that's abortive, that, that will be the last element to come back into alignment. What I mean is the cervical fluid that slows down the sperm, that'll begin to thin and go back to normal much quicker than the uterine lining thickening and going back to normal. So what happens and producing eggs and getting back on our cycle, all those things right? Her cervical fluid going back to normal, her producing eggs again and ovulating like normal. Both of those things statistically will happen before, sometimes even six months before the lining of her uterine wall goes back to normal, which means now she, her, her body for six months is a baby killing machine. And I'm not saying that she meant to do that. Most women are ignorant of that. Christian women have done this and they don't know. But, but her, in real terms, objectively, scientifically, because we're Christians, we like science, just actual science, not the science, <laughs> but actual science. The science is that uh, the first two measures will come back. They'll drop off and, and she'll go back to normal much quicker in the first two regards than the third, which means all of a sudden the sperm are making it to the egg and she's ovulating now. There's an egg to be fertilized, but that third measure of the uterine lining has not yet come back to normal. And so now she's just, boom, producing eggs. Her husband is fertilizing those eggs and those eggs are dying. They're being terminated. They have nowhere to go. And honestly, <laughs> it, it, there's so many things, but I mean, with, with abortion, it's, you know, obviously thou shall not murder right? The sixth commandment, Exodus 20. But even in addition, there are commandments all throughout the Bible that talk about exercising hospitality and loving our neighbor. Um, women, <laughs> the child in your womb is your neighbor. It's one of your closest neighbors. I mean, literally, physically <laughs> is the closest neighbor, um, but also in terms of relationally and figuratively, this is your child, right? That, that baby is your neighbor. That really your neighbor, if anyone's your neighbor, that, that baby is your neighbor. And we're called to love our neighbor. And one of the commandments that we find throughout the scripture again and again in exercising love for our neighbor is exercising hospitality. And so women, you want to host people in your homes. You want that home to be clean. You want it to be nice. You don't want it to be dangerous, right? You don't want to have a family over in your home, cook a meal for them and have poison in the meal, right? You don't want to have a family in your home with young children and have glass on the ground that can cut them. Then you want to love your neighbor that child in your womb is your neighbor. And your womb is, is a place where you are exercising hospitality to that little neighbor. So make it a hospitable place. Make it a place of warmth and safety and love and not a place of danger and death and destruction. And again, Christian women who are listening to this, if you're not already on board, some of you are probably amening. I can't see the comments. Nathan's watching them. So, but uh, you know, if you're amening, then you already knew. Praise God. And a lot of you who are maybe reacting right now with terror, um, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that it's probably because um, not malice, but ignorance. You just didn't know. And you didn't know because these things are hidden. Um, our world doesn't want you to know. 
The medical establishment does not want you to know. Pharmaceutical companies do not want you to know. Your doctor who's really friendly with you when he visits with, like, he doesn't want you to know. He may be nice, but he, he's not. He doesn't want you to know. Um, but now you know, and you're responsible for what you know. And you're responsible for what you don't know. Ignorance is not innocence, but you're doubly responsible for what you know. So act accordingly. Wait, 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 real quick, before you go, do me a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the bell so you'll be notified with all our new content as it comes out on a daily basis. And if you're willing to support this ministry, you can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate. Thanks so much. God bless.